So is it possible to get a fantastic laptop under $1,000 as a graphic designer? Well, I'm glad you came into this video today because that's the question that we're gonna answer. I'm gonna walk you through the specs, the different models that I recommend, and the reasons why a graphic design computer could be under $1,000. Coming at you right now. My name is Benji Kaiser. I've been in the graphic design industry for a little under a decade now, and I love the tech side of graphic design. As we're going through this video, if you're curious about the exact models I'm talking about, you can check out the links in the description below. Those are affiliate links, and I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's what keeps these videos alive and coming out your way. Okay, so this is a video that I was really hesitant to do for, honestly, the past about year. Um, I have the best laptops, the best budget laptops, but most of those laptops fall uh, around the 2000 to 1200 to 1500 range, somewhere in there. And the performance in the machines is fantastic. I completely stand by every one of those machines that I've recommended in the videos I've produced in the past. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, Ben, I'm looking for a laptop under $1,000. What do you recommend? And it's a lot easier to recommend laptops that are more expensive because you can just guarantee the performance of those laptops. So I was kind of hesitant to do this video, but I've taken the time to do some due diligence, do the research, and find a few great laptops that I feel will be a good fit for graphic design. Now, disclaimer, I don't feel that these are the absolute best machines for graphic design. There's machines that are really well equipped to do some things in After Effects and Premiere Pro because for me personally, I feel that's where graphic design is going, being able to do those animated visual designs for Instagram ads and Facebook ads and different online web applications. So that's why this video has been a long time coming, but I'm excited to walk through this with you right now. The first thing I wanna talk about is the specs. I think the specs are really important when you're considering a laptop under $1,000. You wanna make sure you have the right specs in the computer so that way when you do the graphic design tasks on the day-to-day -day life of a graphic designer, you are not frustrated with the performance of your computer. You have something that is well equipped to accomplish what is set before you each day. So let's start with RAM. You're going to find most of these laptops under $1,000 coming with about 8 gigs of RAM. Now that's a good starting point and I think that 8 gigs of RAM is good enough to get you going in the graphic design industry. The one thing that you find when you have 8 gigs of RAM is you cannot run multiple programs at the same time. Um, you'll find yourself, you'll find the computer slowing down a little bit when you're trying to run Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator all at the same time. You might have to shut down InDesign and Illustrator, or you might have to shut down Photoshop if you're running you know, InDesign and Illustrator, or whatever mix you're doing at that time, because it'll start to slow down your computer. So say you upgrade that computer to 16 gigs of RAM as your budget allows, that will allow your performance to increase, and you'll be able to run more programs at the same time. Personally, in my day-to-day -day graphic design laptop, I run 32 gigs of RAM, and that gives me so much potential to run as many programs as basically I want as I'm working through my day. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is the processor. The i5 processor is a great benchmark for getting going in the graphic design industry with your laptop. This processor has come a long way from when the i5 was first released, and I was looking at some benchmarks, and the i5 and the i7, depending on the edition, are actually fairly comparable in benchmark standards. So that's a good bonus for you because that means you're getting good performance but on a better price. And so the i5 processor you're gonna find in most of the machines that I recommend, but the i7 does appear in some of the machines. Now, if you're interested in these machines right now, right away, you're like, okay, what, what machines is he gonna recommend? You can head down into the description below and check out the models that I recommend. Those are affiliate links, so I will get a commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps these videos out, the research going, and the good content coming your way. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the graphics processing unit. Now, for me, as a benchmark, because I'm doing a lot of video editing and a lot of After Effects, I like to have at least the GTX 1050. But if you're simply doing graphic design tasks, you can completely get away with the GTX 960, the 940, the MX150. All those are very good graphics processing units for working in Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. So no worries about that when it comes to these machines. Um, some of them come with the Intel 620, and that's a perfectly fine graphics processing unit when you're just working in Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. All right, so hard drive. What hard drive should you have? Should you have a solid state hard drive or should you have a hard disk drive? Well, these machines, I find, come with solid-state hard drives to the boot, and that means that they run the computer off of the solid-state hard drive, and then some of them come with the hard disk drive to store all your files uh, that you're working on, your photos, your design files, etc. 
And so that's a really good setup. The reason you want a solid state hard drive as your boot up drive is because it's faster and more reliable. So it'll make your load times faster, it'll make your programs faster because the read and write speeds are way faster than a hard disk drive. All right, now let's talk about the day-to-day -day of these computers, the screens, the components, the ports on the side, etc. So you wanna make sure that your computer comes with the ports that you need as your day-to-day -day graphic design work calls for. So for me, that could be very different from you. And so as you're looking through these computers and clicking through the links below to check out the models that I'm recommending, make sure you look at those ports on the side. Does it have a USB port if you're gonna be sharing files through a thumb drive? Does it have an SD card slot? If you're somebody who's doing a lot of photography, you take your own pictures, so you need that SD card slot to kind of boost your productivity. Does it have an HDMI port or a display port if you're going to be having an exterior monitor? Um, I actually run a monitor off of my laptop and that gives me a little more working space and I like that a lot. So I have an HDMI port on my computer. Do you need Thunderbolt? Do you need a headphone jack? So just really be thinking about these things as you're looking to get the computer in the model that you like. Okay, the screen. These computers come with HD screens, so the quality is good. Now, because these are more of the budget range, they're not gonna have as much Adobe RGB. So for instance, the Gigabyte Aero 15 has 100% Adobe RGB color space. This is one of the best screens on the market for color quality. Now, these screens are more on a budget category, so they're not gonna have the most color accuracy, but they're really good screens, they're really crisp, and you're gonna be able to do your work well. It's not gonna throw you off, it's not gonna be all blurry like the old school compact computers. Okay, now let's talk about if you're maybe an illustrator. Well, some of the computers recommended do have the two-in-one flip screen, and you can get a pen because they are touch screen, and so you can do drawing directly on the screen, which could be very helpful for you as an illustrator. So you gotta think of some of these things, some of these usabilities. And all the computers that are recommended are going to be very lightweight computers. There's nothing here too bulky, nothing that was gonna make you difficult if you're a student or if you're a graphic designer who's out on the town a lot, going to meetings in coffee shops and things like that. All right, so that kind of gave you a perspective on what to be looking for as far as the experience of your computer is concerned. All right, now let's jump into the recommendations and check out these computers and see which one fits best for you. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is the HP Pavilion X360. This is a computer that is a two-in-one laptop, and what that means is the screen folds over and it becomes flat, so you can use a drawing pen to maybe do some Illustrator sketches on it, to do some Photoshop work, whatever it might be. This computer is fantastic because it comes with eight gigs of RAM, but it's able to be upgraded to 32. So like I said, if you're on a budget right now, but you know that maybe in a couple months you'll have a few extra hundred dollars to upgrade that RAM, you can totally do that with this computer. It has the Intel 620 graphics processing unit, so it's gonna be a good machine for Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, but not gonna be something you wanna use for any After Effects or Premiere Pro. Just take a side note there. It comes with the i5 processor and 256 gigs of solid state hard drive. So this is a great computer and a cool one to get us started in this roundup. The next computer is the Acer Aspire 5. I like this computer because it comes with the i7 processor, so it's gonna be a little bit more powerful as far as the processing speed is concerned. It has eight gigs of RAM, it has the MX150 graphics processing unit by Nvidia, and it has a 256 gig solid state hard drive. So very good computer, and like I've been saying, if you wanna upgrade that RAM later, you can totally do that with this machine. So this next computer is probably one of my favorite computers in the lineup, kind of for all around performance and build, and this is the VivoBook S. I really like this computer because it has a top cover, which is an aluminum bezel, uh, which is pretty cool. A lot of these budget computers, uh, a lot of these computers under $1,000 you're gonna find are just plastic builds, um, but this computer takes it a little bit above the uh, edge of the competition and gives you that aluminum top cover. Okay, now what I also like about this computer is it comes with the i7 processor, it comes with the MX150 graphics processing unit, eight gigs of RAM, and a solid state hard drive of 256 gigs, plus the standard hard disk drive as your storage. So you're gonna boot up on the 256 gig solid state hard drive, and you'll save all of your files on the standard one terabyte hard disk drive. All right, so the next computer and close behind the Vivo book is the Lenovo Yoga 710. Another aluminum build, which is great for this category under $1,000. It comes with the i5 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the Intel 620 graphics processing unit, and a 256 gig solid state hard drive. So there's a bit of a differences here between the VivoBook, which you have more RAM, but you have a less powerful graphics processing unit, 
you have less powerful processor because you have the i5 versus the i7 in the vivo book so there's just some comparisons here that you might want to consider between those two one of the bonuses of the Lenovo Yoga is it has the two-in-one screen. So you can flip that screen and then do your illustrating and sketching and Photoshop work on it. So there's some really good variety in this list, and I hope you're finding this valuable so far. If so, smash down on that like button. Share this out with anybody you know looking for a budget computer. All right, last but not least, and this computer, in my opinion, has the most potential for long-term performance, and that's the Dell G3. And this is the only 17-inch computer on the list but I'm gonna walk you through the specs and tell you why I like this computer so much. First off, it comes with eight gigs of RAM. Now, that's not a huge deal because that's the baseline, that's the starting point, but you can upgrade that RAM to 16 or 32 if you so choose. Next, it comes with the GTX 1050 Ti graphics processing unit. So though this computer comes with the standard RAM, it comes with a GPU that is really well qualified to do that After Effects and Premiere Pro work I was talking about that where I see the graphic design industry going. It also comes with the i7 processor and a 128 gig solid state hard drive plus the one terabyte standard hard disk drive. So you boot up on the solid state and you have the hard disk drive for your storage. So the reason I see this computer having so much potential is it becomes with the high performing GPU and CPU. And the things that are a little bit more in the budget category can be easily upgraded by yourself. So that's why I think that computer would be a great long term buy that you could upgrade as money allows and it's the 17 inch screen, so you got more room for your design work. All right, well there are my recommendations for budget computers under $1,000. I really hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, again, smash down that like button. If it hasn't, double tap that dislike, that's always a bonus. And I am so glad you came into this channel. Again, Benji Kaiser here helping you get started and maximize your potential in the graphic design industry. I will see you here on the next episode.